Hi, I'm Beth with 50 Plus Beauty, and I'm excited that you're here with me today to see my skincare favorites of 2018. Yes, that's right. I'm going to be showing you everything that I use and enjoy after the past year. These are the things that I have found to help me look my best at 60. Ha, that's hard to say. And in April, on April 22nd, I will be 61 years old. And so these things have really been helpful to me in trying to turn back the clock just a little bit. You know, it's not about looking 20 anymore when you get to be in your second half, but it is about looking the best we can for whatever age we are. Okay, first, if you're not a subscriber and you're interested in all things anti-aging, then I hope you'll consider subscribing. And when you click that bell, it just notifies you by email of my future videos. I do videos twice a week. And if you can give me a thumbs up, that would be great too. Okay, before I get into the skincare things that I use, I did want to tell you about the procedures and things that I've had done in the past. The first is that I had a fat transfer to my cheeks and to my nasal folds probably about five or six years ago. And I will say I was not really pleased that that was done to me. And everybody says, well, how can you not know that they're injecting fat in your cheeks? Well, I will tell you this story very quickly, and it's part of another story that I need to tell you about, which is that I had a breast fat transfer. I had silicone breast implants taken out to be replaced by fat, and that was part of my journey to get rid of my rheumatoid arthritis that I was diagnosed with in my late 30s and wrestled with for many years. That's a whole nother video though. And if you'd like to know about the breast fat transfer procedure and or how I dealt with my rheumatoid arthritis, I'm totally pain free now, then please put that in the comments section below. Basically what happened is that I had the breast fat transfer and what that is, is in my case, they took out my existing silicone implants and they replaced them with fat from my belly and from my upper thighs. And that was great. You kind of had a twofer, little thinner waist, little thinner thighs, and you had that fat injected into your breasts, or at least that's what I had done. And I asked the doctor if he could inject some of the fat that he was harvesting from my belly into my nasal folds because they were kind of deep at that point. And he said yes, and he said that he would also add some fat in a few places that he thought were lacking and I made the mistake of not asking what that meant, what that entailed, and when I woke up, I was horrified that I had these big cheeks, and they have come down a lot now, and I am dealing with them, and a lot of people say they like them, but I really preferred my old cheeks, and I guess the lesson from that is that when you have these sorts of procedures done, just make sure that you and the doctor are on exactly the same page, that you understand the procedure that's going to be done so you don't wake up horrified as I was. But I've made the best of it and so I think my cheeks are kind of okay. But I'm a little afraid, in fact a lot afraid of fat transfer because of that. So that was my experience with fat transfer and it made me a little bit nervous, no a lot nervous about getting something so permanent done. And another thing that I had done maybe seven or eight years ago is that I had liposuction under my chin because I had a little bit of a double chin here. It wasn't horrible, but the lipo did kind of take out the fat under my chin. And if I had to do it again, I really wouldn't do it again because you do get a little scar under here. And now they have what they call Kybella, which is I believe an injection that over time reduces the fat in that area. I would not have had lipo under my chin, but you know, times change. And all in all, I'm happy with the way my face looks now. This is a picture of me before the procedure on the morning of the fat transfer. And as you can see on my face, I really didn't have the high cheekbones that I have now, but I've gotten used to them. Okay, let's get into my skincare favorites of 2018. And I'll start with the ones that I believe gave me the biggest bang for my buck during the past year. And the first is of course Retin-A, and I use the 0.05% strength. There is a really grimy looking tube of Retin-A. I absolutely love using the Tretinoin, which is what this is. And in fact, probably this is what really brought me to have a YouTube channel at all, is that I started using the Retin-A and really realized how wonderful it was. I had started to use Retin-A for a couple of years in my 40s, but the peeling was just horrible and I gave it up. And it wasn't until I started watching YouTube, I think I was maybe 57 years old, 58 years old, I started watching YouTube and seeing other YouTubers have great experience using the Retin-A. And it takes about six months before you see any effects, but at the six month and certainly the one year point, I was really starting to see some wonderful effects. My skin just looks plumper, slightly less wrinkled, and has more of that thicker skin look that younger skin tends to have. 
and I use several serums along with my Retin-A, and I'll link my skincare video below. But two of the serums that I think have done the absolute most for my skin are right here. And the first one is a timeless serum, which means it's very inexpensive, and it's the vitamin C plus E plus ferulic acid. I apply this right before I apply my Retin-A. And another serum that I really use and enjoy and think really gives me a lot of bang for my bucks is this Serum by The Ordinary, so it's reasonable in price, and I'll link it below. It's their Niacinamide 10% Zinc 1% Serum. And what Niacinamide does is that it brightens up your skin. And by that I mean if you have a lot of little brown marks, discolorations, using Niacinamide over time just helps bleach those out, helps fade those out. It's not like Hydroquinone, but it really does give you a much more even textured, more brightened skin. Now another skincare item that I really use and enjoy is something that I use for my neck. It's the Gold Bond Neck and Chest Firming Cream, and I will link a video that I did about this product below. And what I do is that at night I put this cream on my neck and chest area, mostly just my neck, and I've noticed that it kind of softens the wrinkles there, kind of firms up my neck. I don't know if it's just a great moisturizer because I'm not really sure of the active ingredients in this cream, but I do know that when I quit using it, these neck wrinkles seem much more visible. And also I even get this little kind of crepey skin here, kind of a turkey waddle. And as long as I keep using this cream, I really don't have that effect. And at one point I stopped using this for a couple of months because I was really using the Retin-A all over my whole face. But then I realized that the Retin-A was just too irritating to my neck and I would always walk around during the day with this ugly red neck. And so finally I realized that I needed to quit the Retin-A use on my neck. And so I just started using this cream alone and that's all I do on my neck, that plus my serums. And I think it's really helped improve the look of my neck. Now my next two items are beauty tools and I really can't live without these. I love them both very much. The first is this little facial flex device and I think it's like $40 on Amazon and I'll link it below. But what this does for me is I think it helps to keep the jawline area and the upper neck area kind of firm. And I will say this is not like a facelift. You know, if your jowls are very saggy, nothing's going to help that probably but a facelift. But I think that this really does help strengthen the muscles in this area and down to the upper neck and how you use it, and I will link a video below explaining it more in depth, but you just put it in your mouth, and then you're gonna go like, squeeze it, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, and you can feel all the muscles in your lower face and neck contract, and I do it in several different ways. I do it so forward, and then I go up, one, two, three, one, two, three, and then the side, one, two, three, one, two, three, and with this device, over time, it can cause an increase in the mouth wrinkles. So I use this kind of sporadically. I'll use it for a couple of months until everything's nice and firmed up. But once I start seeing those mouth wrinkles starting to form, I'll lay off of it for a month or so, and then I'll start it up again. And I've noticed that some other YouTubers do this. I always wondered why they laid off, and now I realize that it is because you can increase your mouth wrinkles with this but I feel like it makes my face look so much better that it's kind of worth the trade-off there. So what I do is that I get up at five o'clock in the morning and I go into the bathroom, brush my teeth, put in my contacts, and then I set my cell phone timer for two minutes and I do this for two minutes. And then I use my New Face Trinity facial firming device. And this takes about six minutes. I've actually timed it. I don't do the whole long involved workout and I have kind of a little workout that I've designed on my own that hits my special areas that I think are important. So what I do is I put the conducting gel on my face where sometimes I use aloe vera gel and I do three passes here, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, just like they have in the directions. And again, you can see exactly what I do in the video below. But I do that and then I use it on my upper eye area. And again, you can see my video to see how I do that. I have not used the extra L attachment, but I really need to do that. And maybe I'll do a video about that down the road. If you'd like to see that, please ask in the comment section below. But then I do a hold in my nasal area and then I do some holds here on the cheeks and a little bit down here and a little bit up and down on the outsides of the neck. But all in all, it takes me about six minutes. I avoid this area entirely, and I should have mentioned this earlier on in the video, but I think of my Botox use as just something I do. I almost don't even think about it. But the reason I don't use the Trinity on my forehead 
is because since I was 42 for the past 18 years, I've used Botox on my forehead and in my crow's feet areas. So I figure why waste the extra time as Botox essentially freezes these muscles here. So I don't waste my time on that. And the new face produces very subtle results, but they're actually very real. And I found that out when I quit using this for a couple of months. It's so funny because when you use this, at first you see a good improvement in the first week or two weeks. And then you think, oh, it's kind of subtle. Maybe it's not working. And you can just tend to kind of drop it. And that's what I did for a couple of months. And I have a video showing you what happened to my face when I quit using it. And what I really found was that the new face really perks up your skin. It gives it a rosy, more youthful skin tone. And what it does is it subtly refines your skin. It firms up your skin and it even makes your facial bone structure look a little more fine, a little more compact, a little less saggy. I absolutely love this new face skin toning device and I won't be without it. And the next products I'm going to show you are products that I use to help me deal with these symptoms of Retin-A. And like any medications, Retin-A does have its symptoms. For the past two years, I've used Retin-A and I really feel like my skin looks firmer and tighter and just better all over, but I also get into the peely mess sometimes. And for the longest time, I wasn't having any negative repercussions and I hope that is the case for you. But for some reason in the last month or so, my skin has decided to react to Retin-A again. So we're going back through the peelies, which is no fun. So I do several things to help deal with that. The first is that in the shower every morning when I'm cleansing my skin, I use this Derma E anti-wrinkle cleanser, which has vitamin A and glycolic acid. And so what I do is when I get into the shower, I get everything all wet all over. And then I just take one spritz of this, maybe two, put it all over my face and neck. And I get a little bit of a tingle, a little bit of a burning sensation. And what this is doing is that the glycolic acid is really peeling away those dead skin layers on the top and hopefully getting rid of a lot of the Retin-A peeling. I really like this cleanser. I think it's a perfect complement to Retin-A. Even using that cleanser though, which I've used that the whole time I've used Retin-A, so I recommend it very highly. But even with that, lately I've been getting some extra peeling and I use two products to help deal with that peeling. The first is a product that I leave on overnight. This is the Peter Thomas Roth Glycolic Acid 10% Hydrating Gel. And I don't use this all the time, but whenever I notice the peeling is getting particularly bad, as the last step in my skincare, I will go ahead and add this, and it does tend to slough off those peelies. But then when I've done all of that, and I still notice some peeling, and usually I notice it in the morning as I'm sitting here getting my makeup done, I think, oh my gosh, I look like a peely alligator. Then I bring in my big emergency bottle of the Ordinary Peeling Solution, and this is an AHA 30% and BHA 2% peeling solution. And this doesn't look great on your skin. It's kind of a blueberry red color. I don't like it at all. But what I do is that when I'm starting to get made up in the morning and I realize I'm seeing the peelings, I take this out and it's just a little gel-like solution. It looks a little like strawberry jam or cherry jam, something like that. But I just take one little dropper of this and I rub it all over the lower part of my face, which is where I've been having the peeling. And I'll show you a picture here of how this looks because I just did it this morning. As you can see in the first picture, I have peeling, which is no fun. Then in the second picture, I've applied the gel, which looks like blood, a vampire facial, something like that. And then in the third picture, I've just removed the gel with a wet wash rag. And as you can see, my skin is still a bit red. And this does kind of irritate your skin. It makes it a little bit red, but that redness goes away in just a few moments. And then I apply my primer, I apply my foundation and go on with my makeup. This product does so well as an emergency solution that I actually have a bottle of this that I carry around in my purse with me. I put it in a baggie along with a little vial of my foundation. That way, if I'm going through the day and I think, oh my gosh, my skin looks horrible. I've got the alligator peeling again. I just go in the bathroom and apply this for about a minute or two, take it off with one of the towels in the bathroom, and then I reapply my foundation. And I don't have to do it all over my face. Generally, my peeling is right around my lower jaw mouth area. Now something else that can be a symptom of Retin-A use is dry lips and I have them every now and then. So I keep this on my counter and I don't use it every single night, but whenever my lips feel a little bit dry, I use this and I absolutely love it. It's very emollient. It's the Lansano HPA Lanolin Cream. It's just a little bit of a clear oily gel and you put it all over your lips and it really lubricates them and moisturizes them much more than those chapstick type products. 
Now when you use Retin-A, you must use sunscreen every day because Retin-A peels back the top layers of your skin and makes you very sensitive to the sun, which can really bring on those brown spots and wrinkles if you're not using a sunscreen. And I've really been loving this Color Science Unforgettable Sun Protection Face Shield in SPF 50. It's a physical sunblock, which means it's zinc and not chemically based, and so it does not react poorly to your Retin-A. Whenever I use a standard facial sunblock, when I put on my makeup, it just makes my makeup up pill off my skin. Those types of sunblocks just don't work with Retin-A, but this physical sunblock does work very well and I've been using it very effectively. Now I just have a few more products to show you. The first is this Babe Lash. I absolutely love this. I keep this on my vanity and every night as the last phase to my skincare, I just brush this along my top eyelashes and also along my eyebrows. I really feel like it's especially helping my brows fill in and it's doing a good job on my lashes too. Now another kind of random product is this Lumify. I absolutely love this and I used it this morning. And as you can tell, the whites of my eyes look a little whiter than they do in many of my videos. I think my natural eyes now look a little bit like snake eyes because they're normally very yellowish red. But when I use this Lumify, it just brightens the whites of my eyes, which helps us look younger. And the neat thing about Lumify, as opposed to other Visine type products, is those standard, more traditional products can cause rebound redness. In other words, when you use those and stop using them, the redness becomes even worse. So they're kind of addictive. You can use this for a few months, enjoy brighter eyes, but when you quit using it, the redness is no worse than before you began. I really love this product and it helps make our aging kind of yellow red snake eyes, which is what I call mine. It helps make our eyes look younger. Now my last product is something simple that I use to clean my skin at night. And basically what I do is after I've removed my eye makeup, I have an oil that I use to remove my eye makeup. It's the CoverGirl Eye Makeup Remover Oil. And Oil of Olay also makes these, but I'm trying to save a buck, and so I get these at Walmart. They're the Equate Beauty generic brand of that Oil of Olay product. But basically these are the two-in-one daily facial cloths, and you get 66 of them in this little box. And here is what they look like. And what you do is you just get a little cloth and you get it wet and then you just scruffle it all around your face. And as you can see by this wipe, it is textured. So it really does help get the grime out of those pores. And I do it all around my face and neck on one side. And then I turn it over and I use the other side and just throw this in the potty. But it really does clean your face and it's super easy and takes just a few moments. Now that was a look at my 2018 skincare faves plus a few other extra items. And if you're not a subscriber and are interested in the best in anti-aging, I hope you'll consider subscribing. And when you click that little bell that just sends you email notifications of my future videos. And if you could give me a thumbs up, that would help this video too. Now, I always like to leave you with a little thought for the day. And I've been using these Language of Letting Go cards by Melody Beatty. Let's see what God wants us to think about for today. Okay, God, come on strong. It's actually New Year's Day here. Trusting God. Trusting God. How funny. This is January 1st of 2019, and I pulled the card Trusting God. Ladies, this is so important. Today, I will ask God to send me his best. I will trust that all that is good will come to me. I will remember that sometimes we don't get what we want because God has something infinitely better in store for us. Oh, friends, I absolutely love this card, and thank you, God. You just reminded me yet again that January 1st and all through 2019, we need to totally turn our lives over to you, at least I certainly do, and that when we do that, you will give us your absolute best, and it is so true. I don't think God gives bad gifts. I think God gives great gifts, and sometimes when we get what appears to be a bad gift, it's really God just redirecting us into the proper course for us and for our lives. So friends, just for today, let's remember that God is everything and trust God with our very lives because when we do that, not only do we have a greater second half, we have a fabulous eternity. Take care. See you next time.